Hi everyone, this is Vidushi and today I'm going to talk about feature engineering for molecular deep learning. Now feature engineering is the important bridge between acquiring data and feeding it to neural networks. Data for molecular problems could be in any or several formats, structure, variable, chemical parameter. This raw data needs to be converted to a format which is meaningful for machine learning and deep learning algorithms. This involves extracting important features, raw data, intrinsic to problem domain. For molecular problems, materials can be represented to neural networks in two formats, elemental or structural. Elemental descriptors use the intrinsic properties of elements like atomic numbers, atomization energy, electronegativity, charges, etc. While structural descriptors call for representation of atomic neighborhood or chemical space as a whole. Mostly, a combination of structural and elemental descriptors is essential for better representation. To summarize, feature engineering is the process of transforming molecular structures into an input vector suitable for machine learning algorithms. The features selected in the process are called descriptors. Now, can we use atomic positions as input for machine learning algorithms? Cartesian coordinates can be used as input for some advanced graph neural network algorithms in presence of extensive data set. If Cartesian coordinates are used in neural networks, the energy would not be transrotationally invariant. So before we speak of descriptors, let's speak of basic requirements for descriptors. Descriptors need to have reference invariance. The predicted property of the material should be invariant to the transrotational transformation of the system coordinates. Next, the predicted property of the material should not change if the identical atoms are exchanged and descriptor should be able to accurately differentiate the two materials even when the atomic positions are slightly different. Small changes in the atomic structure should translate to small changes in the descriptor. Now let's briefly describe some common descriptors. Adjacency matrix. Adjacent matrix is a square matrix and indicate whether the elements of the matrix are adjacent or not. It is a graph representation of interaction between the atoms. Here, atoms which are connected to zero by bond directly are noted as one. So five is the only atom not directly connected to zero. Let's look for one. One has only two atoms in its adjacency, 0 and 3. We trace neighbors for each atom in the row and column format where diagonals is 0. This matrix is symmetric and also binary. However, there is no need for this matrix to be binary. You can use any real numbers to indicate information specific to your structure and problem. Specific information about the chemistry of the atomic species could be incorporated into adjacency matrix leading to Coulomb matrix. Coulomb matrix combines both structural and charge information. It is similar to adjacency matrix and encodes the atomic species and interatomic distances of a finite system in a pairwise two-body matrix. Elements of the matrix are given by Mij, where Z is the atomic number and Ri minus Rj is Euclidean distance between atom I and J. Though Coulomb matrix is invariant to molecular rotations, it is sensitive to ordering of atoms. Now let's extend this matrix to a periodic system. Some of you may still wonder what are periodic systems. In periodic systems, each atom is infinitely repeated in three crystal lattice vector directions A, B and C. The electronic interaction between atoms becomes phi i j. Here, sigma n is the sum over all three lattice vectors n equals to h a plus k b plus LC. There is another more stripped down approach to these matrices called bag of bonds. This method is based on the intuition that almost all of the latent heat energy is stored in chemical bonds. It is inspired by the bag of words featureization used in natural language processing. Bags correspond to the different type of bonds such as CO, 
CH, etc. Bonds are distinguished by the atoms involved and the order of the bonds such as single bond, double bond and triple bond. Coulomb matrix elements can be segregated within each bag according to their magnitudes. Now what is common feature in all these methods? These methods are suitable mostly for ordered systems, crystalline systems. And secondly, these are all global descriptors. These descriptors represent the entire structure as whole. As a common question, what other methods would you prefer for representing your structure for deep learning model? Do you think your method is problem specific? You can write down about this in the comment section below. Thank you.